dudes, it's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So, we have the final dev stream of 2023 tomorrow. We're going over the whispers in the wall and all that kind of good stuff with the final dev stream of the year. So, we'll be doing a prediction video today and a little bit of dev stream bingo. If you are new to the channel, we pretty much do this every single dev stream. I try to go over what my predictions will be, a little bit of fun and sarcasm along the way, too. And yeah, we kind of check if we got bingo or not the next day. Of course, I will be covering the new DE Warframe dev stream live on my stream uh, alongside it, the co-streaming it. So come on, stop by tomorrow if you want to. But remember, there will be an Umbra Forma drop from watching DE's stream. So make sure you get that uh, as well. So let's get right into it. We got plenty of stuff to go over. And yeah, just a reminder too, this is, none of this stuff is confirmed. This is all just speculation and fun. Uh, the stream will come out tomorrow, and it will be covering Whispers in the Wall mainly. So a lot of stuff will be involving Whispers in the Wall, our newest major update. And as far as what we know it will be already, it's going to be like a kind of like new tile set kind of thing. Think about like Zeramon 2.0. So let's get to our bingo card right here. Now, as far as what we've got on here, let's just start off with the first row, okay? So it's a new... It's a, I'm making a lot of assumptions here, okay? So it's a new tile set underneath... Like basically the basement of Diamos. And what do new tile sets usually bring in this game? They bring a new game mode, usually. So, I'm expecting there to be a new game mode in this new update. Also, that'll probably be what the clan event is, that new game mode as well. So, first square, new game mode looks good. We're getting, like, when we got the Zeramon ship, we got three new game modes. And one of them is, like, pretty much entirely forgotten, because it's over-designed, over in my opinion. It's called Void Armageddon. No one plays that, unless you have to for, like, Hespar handle over it is. But the other two, Void Cascade and Void Flood, those are actually viewed pretty positively, I'd say. So let's hope that the new game mode, I'm hoping there's only one new game mode, and I hope it's a good one too. Moving on to the next one. Remember how I said earlier there's going to be an Umbra Forma drop? Well, there was actually a drop, or a, a, a stream watching drop for a Tau Shard before, and guess what? They randomly decided, like, hey, you know what? You can actually have two Tau Shards in this drop instead. So they made the previous drop two Tau Shards. I'm saying maybe there will be a second Umbra Forma drop if you watch the whole time. So make sure you watch the whole entire stream if you can. There might be a chance they make a second Umbra Forma drop. But don't don't quote me on that because it only happened once before if I remember. Moving on to the next one. Hint for the next frame rework. Uh, Hydroid's rework went really well. It's like basically getting an entirely new frame as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so who's next basically? The, there is quite a few options. You know, there's... There's always going to be, uh, you know, Valkyr, Anaros, Loki, um, some other ones that aren't really phenomenal. Like, you know, Caliban's first ability could definitely use a change. So, maybe a hint on the next frame rework. And there's plenty of ones that are like older frames that could use some changes for sure. Moving on. We know this one will be happening at some point. I don't know how soon it will be. Uh, more companion buffs info. We already know this one's happening. They said that they're going to be buffing, like, basically the Sentinels and... Companions that don't get used after the the bond mods were added. So we're talking things like, uh, let's see, what, what doesn't get used much? I mean, Shade Prime just feels like a strictly worse version of the dog. The AI for Shade Prime is really dumb, but maybe it's just an AI problem. Like, there's certain, like, the Crescent Vulpophila, how about that? The Crescent Vulpophila, it has, like, a single target charging attack. I don't even, I don't think I've ever actually used it besides confirming that its mod doesn't even work properly because the Crescent Wolf of Phyla's uh, ability descriptions are not actually, like, appropriate. They're, they're wrong. Like, it says the dash lasts for, like, 12 seconds. The dash lasts for, like, 5 seconds when I checked it last, so. Yeah, and there's also a bunch of Hound abilities that are not very good compared to the actual, like, air quotes, good Hound abilities. So DE has a bunch of stuff they said they're going to be changing. Maybe even companion weapons that are pretty bad, too, like, like the Sweeper Prime, maybe. Um... So, yeah, that's what I'm hoping they're going to talk about soon rather than later. And then, of course, there will be a speed of nerf in 2024, but I doubt they'll be talking about speed of nerfs on this stream. Maybe they'll joke about it, though. Moving on, we have Helminth resource changes. I could have swore I saw one of the DE devs saying there would be some changes to how uh, shards get removed. It's not just going to be bile in the future, but I can't find that quote right now. Uh, I could definitely think it could be appropriate to be like, okay, we're going to change it up. If you want to remove your shards, maybe it will rotate per day what kind of resource it is. Like, oh, today, on, on Tuesdays, it's Bile. On Wednesdays, it's Calcs to remove your Tau shards. And on Saturdays, it's Synthetics. You can remove your Tau shards of Synthetics. And it would be, like, random. I think that could be maybe something that's interesting, as, lo as long as it's just not Bile every single day. 
If you don't have like, you know, tons and tons of void gel orbs or like argon crystals or like whatever you use for, for bile, it's pretty painful to remove those shards, especially as someone that removes shards a lot. Me, I, I just burn through bile. So they could maybe change something like that. All right, moving on to the next one. It's just Zeramon 2.0. This one's probably going to be pretty pretty close to true here. Um, the new tile is going to be... Uh, well, they, they've actually shown it to us on Tenokan. It will be a new tile. It won't be like an open world. So I'm expecting it to be just like Zeramon. There's bounties. There's not going to be any fishing. There's not going to be any mining. It will just be like a new tile, basically, with some uh, potentially some new game modes and like bounties, basically, and like, you know, Incarnons, blah, blah, blah. So that's my prediction, per, uh, at least for me. Uh, and I think that will be a pretty sound prediction right there because from what we've seen, it does not look like an actual open world. It looks like an, just a tile set. Uh, here's one on the cynical side. New game mode looks bad. Remember Void Armageddon, like I just said? No, nobody really remembers Void Armageddon because Void Armageddon was an overdesigned mess that had a cool idea, but it probably just should have been in a raid. Uh, in Void Armageddon, you could like summon in like turrets that where there's like different types of turrets, like there's an like, ice turret, an electric turret, rocket launcher turret, blah blah blah. So, you know, that was an interesting idea. It's just like, why am I doing this? Basically, it was like a mixture of defense and like tower defense. Uh, and it was just way too slow and over-designed. So, yeah, maybe they'll make it where it's an over-designed mess like that. And we'll just stick with Void Cascade, Disruption, Survival, etc., etc. But let's hope that's not the case. Because uh, I like when we get new, fun, in endless game modes in this game. And it, it happens sometimes. Like, basically once every two years, it feels like. All right, Spellbook is Void Damage. So another thing that we know is happening uh, in this update will be the new Spellbook Grimoire weapon type. Now, my prediction is that it will be a kit gun, but we have a square for that later. Um, but I'm actually also predicting it will have void damage built in uh, as the base damage type. Now, it will probably not be void damage that works on the Eidolon shields, but also maybe DE could be th experimenting with things going forward. I think it will have base void damage. I think that you'll be able to mod it to have void damage and then like a radiation or whatever. If it's a customizable kit gun, you could maybe change that void damage to like heat damage at base. Let you customize what you're trying to do with it. But yeah, if it is void damage, I don't think that will make it where it works on the Eidolon shield. Just because, for some reason, DE doesn't like that. When things that aren't amps uh, damage the Eidolon shields. Even though Eidolons are like five-year-old content at this point. Alright, moving on. This is one that's definitely on the cynical side. Remember the test cluster? Yes, we used to have a test cluster for this game. As of like two years ago. Where they would sometimes invite players to test out things for the upcoming updates make sure they don't glitch out before they actually come out. So I'm, I'm thinking maybe for a update in 2024, we can use the test cluster again. Maybe uh, Echoes of Whispers on the Wall, which I bet would actually be the name of an update because, yeah, we actually have a lot of Echoes updates in this game, at least in the last couple of years. So if they do announce a test cluster thing, uh, you could fill this one in. If they don't, um, yeah, I'm, I had to throw out a difficult one on here. But basically, yeah, remember the test cluster, guys? You had to, like, be invited to it and stuff like that. It, it really didn't. They only used it, like, two or three times. But that's pretty funny to me. All right, next one. New, no actual new Kavat. If you watch Tenokan, like, very, very meticulously, you might have noticed during the art panel, there was a picture, and one of the DE devs said, this is a picture of a new Kavat coming in a future update. Now, when they said that, that was before they showed the Whispers in the Wall and Warframe 1999 trailers for the new updates showing... Uh, the Entrati dude with his special, like, hairless cat, basically. Now, I'm thinking we might be able to get a skin for that type of cat, but I'm not expecting to get an actual new Kavat type. I'm expecting it just to be Smita and Adarza, no new cat. I'm expecting what they said, when they meant they said new Kavat, they meant like a new Kavat character. It's the, it's the cat that belongs to that, that new character, Entrati. That's my prediction, at least. If they do add a new type of Kavat... That's awesome. I'm glad. I would be glad to be wrong here. Um, but yeah, I think it's just going to stay in Smita and Adarza, and that'll be like a skin for a cat you can get. And basically the exact same one. These are randomized, but I guess it just, it just makes sense. They're next to each other. No actual new mech. Yes, the same exact situation. I'm glad these actually went right next to each other. The same exact situation from Tenokan where they showed an art panel with like a picture of a new Necromech. They referred to that as a new mech, but that was before we saw the new Necromech enemies from this... Whispers of the Wall update. So I'm expecting that to also be not a new Necromech. That was just a picture of the new Necromech enemies. Now, I would be okay with a new Necromech, I guess. At least we get a bunch of mastery out of it. But yeah, uh, having two Necromechs already feels like... On, it's like, whenever I see somebody on Bone Widow, I'm like, why are you not on Void Rig? So 
Uh, yeah, a third Necroback would have to actually prove itself to be worthy of existing because Bone Widow does not really seem worth it to me. Uh, it's been kind of fun in the in the past a few times, but yeah, for the most part, it's just Void Rig all the way. Moving on, though, New Syndicate. Now, this one actually is kind of flaky. So, uh, if you remember, the Necromech Syndicate in the uh, the Void area of Dimos, that actually only goes to rank 3 for the Necromechs. I think it's like 70,000 rep at the maximum or something low like that. Usually, Syndicate's going to rank 5, so I'm expecting there to be either a New Syndicate in the basement of Dimos or I'm expecting that Necromech Syndicate to go rank 5. I, it's probably going to end up being a new Syndicate, but yeah. Uh, reminder that Syndicate does only go to rank 3 on the, uh, with Lloyd, I think his name is. So that could definitely be something they could look into changing. Free space in the middle, all good there. And then we have the Requiem mods used. If you look at where the entrance to this new tile set's going to be, it's in the basement of Dimos. There are Requiem glyphs on the wall for all the Requiem mods that we use. I think besides Ool. So... I'm thinking that since these Requiem mods aren't really... They're only used for Koopa Lich Hunts and, like, Tenant Lich Hunts. Maybe there will be something involving Requiem mods on the new tile of this mission. Like, okay, if you have the Ool Requiem mod, you can sacrifice it and get, like, a special drop or something. You know, those types of things. I think that could be an interesting way to go about it. Now, those mods do come from Relics, and you need to get a specific mod from those Relics to, get, like, kill your... Kill your Lich. So it could be pretty annoying if it's like, oh, it auto-consumes your entire mod to do this special loot thing. So you have to figure out how they want to do that. But I think, like, consuming one charge of your of your Jahu mod to, like, do some kind of buff on the mission could be interesting, at least to me. Uh, but yeah, I'm not really expecting that one to be real because people just complain, honestly. Even though there's not really much to use those Requiem mods on anyway, in my opinion, especially after you have all the Lich stuff done. All right, next one. Now, this one is... There, it, it, I feel like there's like a 50% chance on this next one. Gauss Prime Reveal. I'm not trying to say that Gauss will not be the next Prime frame. I'm just saying that I think that G Grendel Prime has not been out for long enough. Grendel Prime has only been out for like a month. Usually these Prime Accesses last for about three months. The longest Prime Access we ever had was Hildren, which was like over four months. But that was a special situation. I guess they just didn't have time to get the next one out in time. Uh, but yeah, Gauss Prime Reveal. If they do it... If they, I'm sorry, if they reveal Gauss Prime on this stream, it will be out before the holiday season. If they don't reveal Gauss in this stream, I'm not expecting Gauss until, like, January. And they would miss the holiday season uh, Prime launch, which they really don't want to miss. So, for DE's sake, I, you know, hopefully they can they can speed out Gauss Prime, pun intended. Uh, but that's also to be cutting Grendel access really short. But it's, like, I mean, to me at least, the Grendel accessories aren't really any anything phenomenal. Neither are his weapons. Like, Massager Prime literally feels like an obligation. Zylock Prime has an Incarnon that has not worked properly since it launched, so I don't, I don't know what to tell you. But yeah, Gauss Prime will be sick with like Seltra Prime and Acarius Prime, hopefully. All right, moving on to the, the final two rows here. we got the new enemy faction showcased. Remember how I said earlier there's a new Necromech enemy faction? Well, I would like to see how they work a little, little bit more, maybe with a UI this time. We overanalyzed, if you watch some of my older videos, we overanalyzed... Uh, the devs shooting at the Necromech enemies on the new tile, and it does seem like uh, you can just shoot them like with body shots and kill them, unlike normal Necromechs, which require you to shoot their arms. The new Necromech enemies, you can just kill them with body shots. So I kind of just want to see that with the UI on to like confirm my my theories. It's not like that would really be a big, be a big deal, but yeah, do remember that Necromechs and Isolation Vaults require you to shoot off their arms first before you can kill them, at least most of the time. All right, moving on to the next one. Kind of hard to read that because it's really tiny text, but the newest frame, I believe, is called Corvex, and they're going to be talking about Corvex on this new stream. Uh, it's apparently going to be Golem-themed, and I'm going to take it one step further. I think it's going to be Frankenstein Golem-themed. Uh, we just got the Headless Horseman frame. Time for some Frankenstein up in here. Um, because, you know, think about it. The, the They keep saying the new tile sets inspired by Castlevania and, like, mad laboratories and stuff. What does a mad scientist create? Mad scientist could create... Uh, Frankenstein. So I think it's like, going to be a Frankenstein's monster kind of frame. Maybe with a little bit of like crazy void stuff going on with the new Murmur. Because yeah, there's actually two Murmur, uh, two enemy factions it seems like. The Necromech faction and the Murmur faction. So he's either going to be like a Murmur kind of frame or like a Necromech theme frame. But I think it will be a little bit of Frankenstein too, personally. Alright, moving on. Gargoyles Cry Info. Oh, by the way, for the previous one, if he's a Golem theme frame, you can still fill it in. It doesn't have to, doesn't have to be Frankenstein and Golem. 
be the next one. Gar Gargoyles Cry Info. That is the new clan event that they say is be launching about like a week after the main update does drop on whatever date it will be. So I'm hoping that it will be involving the new game mode that will hopefully be good, and then they can tell us if it's going to be like, okay, Arcan Energize is dropping here. Uh, no, not Arcan Energize. Actually, it's going to be the new Whispers of the Wall Arcanes dropping here instead. And they're going to be really annoying to get normally. So you want to make sure you do this clan event. Like, that kind of stuff I'm expecting. But yeah, if they talk about Gargoyles Cry at all, besides, like, it's going to be one week after the event. That's what we're looking for here. Moving on to Perfect Heavy. So this is a feature that we have minimal information about, but Pablo has been talking about it to an extent. Uh, so Perfect Heavy is going to be a new way to do heavy attacks, where basically, uh, yeah, you just... We don't know exactly what's going to happen, but my prediction for it is after you do a bunch of light attacks, at the end of your combo chain, if you push the heavy attack button, it will give you built-in heavy attack efficiency. If you don't know what heavy attack efficiency is, basically when you push the heavy attack button in this game with like a melee, it will drain your entire melee combo if you do a heavy attack. Like if you have 12x, like you can look in the background, like my Korra, if I do a heavy attack to transform my Magistar and Karnan, it will drain all my combo if I don't have any heavy attack efficiency. So that's a pretty annoying thing. It's like, oh, I have to build all my combo back up. Maybe with a perfect heavy, you could have some built-in efficiency, like, I don't know, like 40 or 50% efficiency. So you only lose half your combo. So we'll have to see what that ends up being. I don't know what it is, but my prediction is giving, giving efficiency or maybe some other stat. If there's some other stat that is given through perfect heavies, you can fill that square in because efficiency was just a shot in the dark, honestly. Moving on, more Incarnons purchased for Plat. Remember how they added the Boar Incarnon? Uh, Gemacore and Karnan, Gorgon and Karnan, blah, blah, blah. Like a couple, like five in Karnans, and they were all purchasable for Plat, and they are like the new week two. Well, there's actually like, you know, six other weeks of Incarnons you can't buy with Plat. So you have to grind those out from the circuit. Uh, the Incarnons are 120 Plat each, so you're actually, you know, saving like a, at least an hour of time if you bought it for 120 Plat. So that's my current theory that they might add some more for, for Plat. They, rather, they should, they'll add the ones that already exist. You'll be able to purchase them for Plat. Uh, and I just say, why not? Why, why not let us do that? Because, you know, you already have five in person. What's, what's the big difference here? What, what's the difference between week two and week one uh, as far as not being able to buy the Incarnon? So, moving on to the last row here, we got paid story skip. This is definitely going to get added. Uh, it's something that, you know, it will help people get more interested into the game, if you ask me. So, I think any, the people that were freaking out about it hopefully have, like, calmed down at this point. DE is going to give us some more clarification on how the paid story skip works. You know, you'll probably get, like, the Nana Rook. You'll probably get, like, the Parasesis or whatever uh, from purchasing that. So that's going to be something that's still going to be divisive. It's not like you're, you're wrong if you don't like it. But I'm just wondering, what is your good reason besides it's, you know, it's encouraging bad practices? And that is pretty much the main argument that I got from my previous video when I asked that question. I said, what is your what is your argument for not having a paid story skip? It's like, it's it sets a bad precedent. It can, you know, it can be... Uh, you know, what's, you know, basically just, it, it, it's a slippery slope is, is kind of how the, the vibe was from that. So, if you don't like it, that's okay. I don't I don't love it, but also I want DE to make money. I want this game to, to stick around. So, yeah, whatever they have to do. I mean, I didn't buy the Heirloom skin because I thought that was a kind of a joke and the community agreed and did not buy it either. Um, so, yeah, let's we'll hope Heirloom skins 2.0 is a little bit better too. All right. The last row here, we got Spell Gun. Our Spell Book is a kit gun. That's my current theory that you'll be able to customize it. Um, and then, you know, we'll see about that. If it's a kit gun, that means kit gun ribbons will actually have a reason to exist again. Um, and then the last couple here, Necromech required for this tile. Think about it. They said, if you want to buy the story skip, you can instantly play the Whispers in the Wall update. What would that mean? That would mean you'd probably need a Necromech to beat the new war to, to play this stuff. So I'm thinking a Necromech will be required to get onto this tile set, personally. Uh, that's just my theory. If it's if it's completely wrong, like too bad. But uh, that's my theory that you'll need a necromech to play this. As they require, they're saying if you want to play this new this new content, you can buy the story skip. And what does the story skip entail? Well, it's going to be you on uh, you on the the uh, getting the, the necromech and the vo the railjack to play the new war. So yeah, last couple here. We got Tenno Bomb info and the new Incarnon tenant weapons. So we know that Tenno Bomb will be sometime this year. Um, we just don't know wh uh, when it will be. And also, one of the devs said that we might get a double resource weekend for Tenno Bomb, which is a big gifting event. So, let's hope that's going to be good. And then the last one, new Incarnate Intended Weapons. I'm hoping this is happens, but I hope for this every single dev stream they never actually drop it. So, um, yeah, the big thing here is that they never add, add these new Incarnons. But the last one we got is like the new Tenant, not new, well, new Incarnons would be great, but uh, new Tenant, Weapons also, and Kuva weapons would be great because it just seems like easy content that the players enjoy. But the main focus of this update should be on the new tile set. And none of that stuff was going to come with the new tile set. 
So yeah, that's basically my predictions, guys. Hope you found this video fun and helpful. Um, I will see you tomorrow on stream and also tomorrow with a, uh, a stream overview video of the dev stream. So I'll see you guys there. I'll see you on stream later tonight too. I'll be grinding a bunch of relics just for some fun. And yeah, appreciate all the support, guys. Thank you uh, for being awesome. All right, guys. Bye-bye. See you later.